What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Beth and I'm so glad that you are here today. I'm going to be diving into a topic that I have always loved, have always just been interested and fascinated by, and that is homemaking. So I wanted to make a video that kind of is like a more of a modern approach to this and just talk about some of the things that I think when it comes to homemaking specifically we can get caught up in or the different like ways that homemaking has been a little bit like miscommunicated and misunderstood in our society at least in the times that we're currently living in and just tackle all of that stuff so on the hop i want to give you the disclaimer that this is not just a video for stay-at-home moms it's not just a video even for those people that would hold some of the more traditional values in terms of like husband does this wife does this i'm going to get into all of that in this video but this is going to be a much more holistic video which is why i'm calling it more of a guide where i'm going to go into a little bit of homemaking and what it actually is versus what it isn't kind of my approach that my husband and I have taken with this topic, as well as just tips and tricks for how to improve in this area, a challenge if you want to get better in this area. So if you're interested in hearing any of that, then just keep on watching. So as I mentioned, homemaking is something that has always been really fascinating to me, even as like a little girl and when I moved out to university, before I had a husband or even a home to homemake in or kids or any of that stuff, I still really wanted to make a home that felt inviting and comfortable, not just for me, but also for the people that I welcomed into it. And so my prayer has always been that I would have a home that is life-giving, a place where people can come and feel refreshed and inspired and encouraged and welcomed but obviously when you do add in marriage or even roommates or having kids that element of what it looks like to be a homemaker intensifies a little bit more there's more responsibility tied into it the home that you are creating is impacting more than just yourself or a handful of friends coming in and out there's now this family unit that you are responsible for creating a home for and there's a quote that I've always loved I'm not sure who said it so if I can find it I'll put it in the description box for you guys but the quote is, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And I feel like this is actually a little bit countercultural because so many of us have all of these ambitions and dreams and desires that we're going to go change the world by launching this business or by doing this big thing in our careers. And while there is nothing wrong with any of those things, and you can actually make quite a big impact in the world with all of that, I am just a like firm and wholehearted believer in the fact that there is nothing more important than we can leave behind at the end of our lives than the legacy that we've left with our families and so much of legacy starts in the home and one of the things that I want to get to a little bit in this video and I want to tread the balance of talking about this really delicately and lightly because I know that it can be sensitive for some people but I really do believe that there is a unique gifting and ability on women specifically when it comes to this area of homemaking not only because I am someone that follows Jesus and reads the Bible and takes that as truth in my life but just because historically across cultures we have just seen that women specifically have a unique ability to be able to create these homes that feel welcoming and inviting, not just in cooking and cleaning, not just in child rearing, but across the board, there is something that is special in women to be able to make a house feel like a home. And I think that there is something that is so powerful that can be unlocked when women actually lean into that gifting a little bit more versus running away from it or trying to pretend that it's not something that's in them. Like if you like to do some of these things things that are involved in homemaking, you don't need to feel like there's something wrong with that or like you need to kind of push that side of you down because career is more important or any of those things. I don't want to see homemaking be this thing that is just like kind of dies out in our society because as women, we've been afraid to embrace it. I don't like when feminism actually like puts women down because they choose to stay at home or they choose to focus on homemaking full time. That is when it becomes totally unhelpful to me because it's like, okay, let's actually raise one another up. I think that's the whole purpose of the feminist movement is to actually call each other up in whatever we feel like doing in our lives and just encouraging and celebrating that unique calling that each one of us has. And so with all that being said, I want to dive into homemaking and what it is and what it isn't. So essentially what homemaking is often misunderstood and miscommunicating as is housekeeping. And what I mean by that is that you often will think of a homemaker and you'll think, okay, this is someone that does the cooking, someone that does the cleaning, someone that does the organization in the house, someone that does the laundry. And while all of those may be elements of homemaking in a homemaker's role, 
to me, that is just housekeeping. <laughs> like those are the things that kind of keep a house in order, keep a house functioning, keep a house running. And a lot of those things can be delegated. They don't need to be just mine. They can be my husband's, they can be eventually our kids when they're old enough to handle some of those different things that are more like chore based responsibilities. But to me, that is totally different from what I mean when I talk about homemaking. Homemaking, as I referenced in the beginning, is about making a house feel like a home, about having a place of belonging, a place that is inspiring to be, a place that feels safe and a place that feels welcoming and where people can come at the end of the day, whether it's you, whether it's your husband, whether it's kids coming back from school and just feel like they belong. It's a place where you can take a deep breath and just get comfortable, invite other people in and have them leave feeling refreshed. It's about making a house feel like a place that you really want to be. The way that my husband and I have kind of navigated this topic in our marriage, at least in the early years, is that my husband is the leader of our family, but I am the manager of our household. And so that right now for me includes that element of homemaking. And so in homemaking, housekeeping is a big part of that, as I mentioned, but Jared and I share a lot of those responsibilities. So he does a lot of the cooking in our household. We share a lot of that responsibility and that mental load. And I think that that's a way that things have just worked really well in our family. I've been lucky enough to marry someone that very much believes that all of these responsibilities should be shared. But even with that being said, there is a spoken understanding. And I think that's important as well. It's just getting on the same page with your partner about who is going to handle what things. There's just a spoken knowledge in our house that I am the DRI or the directly responsible individual for homemaking in our household. So I kind of hold that in my brain. I'm the one that kind of holds together those pieces of what's gonna make the home beautiful and feel warm and welcoming and also a lot of those housekeeping elements. And Jared is aware of that and a part of that and we kind of navigate it together, but I am the one that owns it. The reality of homemaking in today's society is that it's not just for stay at home moms. Regardless of what you do vocationally, you you still play a huge role in making your home feel the way that it currently feels. So I do want to get into some of the practical elements of homemaking, like the things that we can do to grow in this area and to have our homes feel more warm and inviting. But I also do want to just start with this like challenging, thought provoking question that always personally convicts me. And it's more from this like 50,000 foot view right now. If you were to look at the way that you are performing this act of homemaking in your home and what you're bringing to the table, what would you say the atmosphere of your home is like right now? Is it the atmosphere that you want to have? What is your ideal atmosphere for your home? And I think for me, that is a question that always gets me because it's not necessarily where I want it to be. One of the things that I think is important for us to remember as women is that we set the temperature for our homes. So we are the thermostat and not the thermometer. We can wake up and we can totally change the entire atmosphere of our home that day if we bring in a negative attitude. But on the contrary, we can do the same if we bring in a positive attitude. And I have seen this at play so many times. If I wake up and I bring negativity to it or I bring an anxious presence to it, that is going to impact my husband. It's going to impact the way that I do things that day. It's going to impact the way that I'm raising my daughter. And so across the board, I think it's important for us as women to recognize the role that we play in setting the temperature in our homes and having that be a place that we want to be, but also a place that's inviting for others as well. So how do you want your home to feel? Do you bring in this presence of like hurry and overwhelmingness and perfectionism and everything has to be done a certain way and at a certain time? Time, and if it's not that way, then I get really flustered. That is often me. Or do you bring in a presence of someone that is calm and relaxed and just not like not caring about how things are done and not caring about excellence because I think that is important and we can actually honor the people in our family and our friends by bringing that. But are you bringing in an element of just like, things are okay. Like I can take a deep breath and I can be really present with you here. And I don't need to be running around hurrying, trying to get things done all the time. There is a story in scripture that is often brought up when it comes to homemaking and it's in Luke 10. And we see this example of Mary and Martha. And essentially the quick version of the story is that Jesus was actually coming into the home of Mary and Martha and they wanted to prepare a space for Jesus, which is a pretty important guest to come in and feel welcomed. And so Martha is 
running around, she's cleaning everything, she's trying to create this meal in this space that feels warm and welcoming and inviting for Jesus. But the Bible actually says that she was distracted by her serving. When Jesus came in, she actually missed out on the opportunity to intentionally connect with him and sit at his feet, which is what Mary is doing. And Jesus actually acknowledges that Mary was doing the right thing in that moment by putting aside some of the things that she wanted to get done to create the space and make it feel inviting and actually just sitting and being with him. And I think that not only does this matter in the way that we approach our faith in our homes and the way that we approach faith in our lives in general, but it also gives us a really great parallel for the way that we operate in our homes as women. Are we taking time to intentionally connect with our family, with our spouse at the end of the day? Or by the time that he comes through the door, if you are a stay at home mom, are you like rushing around in a panic, like trying to get the baby's diapers changed, trying to get dinner going, trying to finish up all the things that you didn't get done before he came home? These are all important questions for us to ask because they change the atmosphere and the temperature that we set in our homes. So really practically, how can we get better at setting this temperature in our homes? And I think the first thing that I've alluded to a little bit here is intentional time with your family. One of the things that Jared and I often often talk about are what are the things that only we can do? What are the things that only I can do as a wife that no one else can actually come in and do? Obviously, reality is someone could do my laundry. Someone could come in and do the dishes. Someone could come in and clean my house and all of these different elements of housekeeping. And while we don't have someone doing that right now, Someone else could do that at the end of the day. No one else can love my husband as a wife like I can. No one else can invest into our kids and into our daughter right now like I can. And so in terms of the prioritization of what I do in a day, those need to be at the top of my list. And so try not to get so caught up with having a clean house or things in order that you actually forget to put everything down and just love your family today. The next thing that you can do is be praying for your family. Obviously if you are someone that doesn't have faith, this might look a little bit different for you. It may look like actually dreaming for your family and having a vision and a direction for where you want things to go with your home and with your family long term. But for me, prayer is a huge element of how I create a home that feels life-giving. And that's because I am looking for opportunities always to invite Jesus into what I'm doing that day. If I am standing at the kitchen sink and I'm doing a bunch of dishes, that is a great opportunity for me to just pause and pray for my kids, for my house, for our community, for my husband, for myself and what I'm going through right now. What are the ways that you can incorporate prayer into your family life and into your home to create a space that feels life-giving? One of the next elements that I would say falls a little bit more into that housekeeping side that I was talking about, but is still a part of homemaking, is setting the tone for the food that your family is going to be eating. And I say this this way because this is not just cooking and what are we eating for dinner tonight and this is what we're doing. I think a large element of homemaking is actually planning and thinking through with intentionality what your family is going to be eating. So this may look like choosing healthy foods. This can also look like budgeting. For me, part of this like setting the tone for food for our family is thinking through how much are we going to spend each month? How can we prioritize healthy options? What are the types of recipes that we want to include that just work really well in the flow of our life right now because we are a busy family. And then cooking is kind of the final piece of that. And so whether that's me or that's Jared, the nice thing is that some thought and intentionality has gone into it beforehand so that by the time that we get to that point, we know where we're going. The next element that is really important in this is maintaining a home that feels peaceful. So a big element of having a home that feels peaceful is actually having it feel clean and orderly. I know that this one can be a little bit tricky because in certain seasons, it's much harder to maintain a clean and organized house than others. But we do know that as people, we actually thrive in places that are orderly and not chaotic. And so whether that looks like a deep clean for you monthly or a continuous tidying throughout the week, I think it is important to find the rhythms that really work for you and your family to have a space that just feels calming when you enter it and a place that everything actually has a place. So another element of homemaking that I personally love and have always been passionate about is making your home beautiful. So this obviously involves decor and the thinking through of the things that you're going to include in your home, but it doesn't mean that you need to have a big house or expensive decor or any of those things to actually make your home feel beautiful. It also doesn't mean that you need to follow certain trends or stylistic things that are happening right now on Instagram 
Instagram or in magazines to have a house that is beautiful. It really is just asking that question of what is beautiful to you, what is meaningful to you, what makes a space feel warm and inviting in your eyes. And while a lot of the times that is cozy candles and blankets and fuzzy socks and things like that, it's not just that. It's thinking through the things that, that actually create feeling in you, whether it's certain artwork that's on the walls that actually really inspires you or makes you feel happy when you look at it or the way that the furniture is set up in your room. One of the things that Jared and I have prioritized on the main level of our home right now is we don't have a TV up here. We've actually put the TV downstairs because that kind of creates a space where we go to watch TV. So when people come over to our house, we're on the level where there is no TV, the chairs are facing the couch and the place is really just set up well for conversation. And so that's part of how we have looked to make our house beautiful, not just in that element of decor, but also in a way that just feels functional and works really well for us. And while it would be lovely to have endless budget for all the wonderful decor in the world, there are ways to do this that are not super expensive and won't break the bank. Like I have personally gone and clipped literally the stuff that is directly behind me, pompous grass, off of the side of a road and put it in a vase before, and that was free. Like it didn't cost me anything to clip that. So if it's not in your budget, don't worry. There are ways that you can make a home feel beautiful. And obviously in time, there may be a little bit more wiggle room to kind of think through where you want things to go and how you want things to look. But I want to emphasize the fact that you don't need to be rich to have a home that feels beautiful. The next thing is to make your home inspiring. One of the things that I talked about and making home feel beautiful was art. And I think that having just art on the walls, music playing in your home, even the smells that you can kind of smell throughout your house, whether or not you realize it, you're kind of absorbing that when you go into someone's space is like the artwork that's there, the smells that you smell, the sounds of that home. And so that's something that I think through often when other people are coming in is how can I create a really inspiring and beautiful place in that sense. So I will often employ all of those different elements and senses. I will turn on the diffuser and put in at Christmas time the clove essential oil with a little bit of citrus to kind of have that nice smell throughout the house. I will put on some beautiful jazz music or oftentimes when I'm home with my daughter I'll put on worship music to kind of set that tone in our home. But there's all of these different things that actually go into making a home feel like a place where you can be inspired and encourage your creativity. It's all these things that you wouldn't necessarily think about but are impacted impacting your experience and others' experiences when they come into your home. The last thing that you can do to kind of step up your game when it comes to homemaking is to establish traditions. Obviously, this is something that is easy to do when you think of having kids and at certain holidays, you would think through, okay, we're gonna do pajamas on Christmas Eve and we're gonna wake up tomorrow and have Christmas breakfast and then go to grandma's and that's the tradition. However, not all of life is holidays and these huge markers or traditions that you would think of. There are a ton of daily and weekly and monthly rhythms that you can actually set in your home for yourself, for just you and your spouse, for you and your roommate, for you and your friends that you can employ to make home feel a little bit more special to you. For example, one of the things that Jared and I have is a tradition or a rhythm in our home is when he comes home through the door, I try and stop what I'm doing at least for a moment and engage with him. But if you have a roommate, you can do something similar. You could actually have that intentional time to connect and stopping what you're doing to say like, I acknowledge you that you're coming in right now and that's important and you also live here and I want you to feel welcomed here. But outside of some of those daily rhythms, there are also monthly things that you can do together. Like maybe you do wanna do a family deep clean, or maybe you wanna do a day where you go out and serve your community together. Or maybe you want to do every four months, some sort of little getaway with you and your spouse, which is something that before we had a baby, my husband and I were doing as well. So this is what I mean by traditions. It's those things that in a season of life you can look back on and have them actually be like core memories. And I think having a sense of tradition now and incorporating that into your home, even when you don't have kids, will be so helpful by the time that you get there because they will grow up with these sense of traditions and feeling like family and home were important to them. And I just feel like that's going to raise better kids at the end of the day than not actually putting the intentionality and thought into some of these things. One of the things that I wanna leave you today is just this reminder that home is not just for us. It's not just for the people that live directly in your household. It's actually a way that you can have an impact on the world around you. What takes place in our homes and the way that we're able to cultivate the people that live inside of it as women will actually impact our community 
communities. I just can't stress and emphasize enough the importance of home, the importance of the family unit, and the importance that you as a woman play in cultivating a space that is life-giving. My currently very pink baby girl has just woken up. So before I pass her off to her dad, I did just wanna throw in the caveat that obviously all of this stuff is impossible to get perfect and to do on our own. So I know for myself, I really rely on community for support in a lot of these things. I really rely on my faith in God and just energy from him to get up and do a lot of these things during the day because the reality is it is hard work to balance having a career and having kids and having a marriage and all of these things in your home. And of course you can do that with your spouse. And some people have spouses that are more supportive than others and I understand that as well. But in all of these things, like you can't do it on your own. So reach out to friends, reach out to family, have people in your life that can lift you up when you're feeling like things are just too much. And know that there is no like perfect end goal or state with any of these things as well. Like it is all just a work in progress. You're never gonna arrive at the perfect home. And so take the pressure off a little bit with that too. I know that we're all just working towards creating homes that are a little bit better every day. I think that's a good way to think about it is how can I just improve even 1% from what I did yesterday instead of feeling like every day you need to have this perfect Martha Stewart house and do the best job being a wife and a, and a mom and all of that stuff because none of us can actually do that. Perfection is not a real thing. So let's all just aim it to get 1% better every day. So to summarize this video, I actually want to leave us all with a challenge and I'm going to take on this challenge as well, thinking about a new year and some of the ways that I want to go into that, being prepared to create a home that feels really intentional over this next year. And the challenge is to write down three words to describe the atmosphere of the home that you want to have. So not the atmosphere of the home that you currently have, but if you were to dream about what you want your home to feel like, what you want it to look like, I want you to think of three words to describe that, and then just take some time to reflect on those words. Do you feel like your home is currently reflecting any of that? Do you feel like you are on the path to reflecting any of that in your home right now? Or are all of these things kind of far off and not quite where you are yet? And if that's the case, then that's okay. I think what's really helpful coming out of this is just having that opportunity to think through, okay, where do we want this to go right now? And what are the ways that we can actually get there? If you are someone that does pray, then my encouragement to you would be to bring some of these words or these descriptors to God and pray that he would either change you in your attitude towards creating a home that can reflect some of these characteristics or even just grow you in your discipline for the practical side of homemaking, whether it is the cleaning or the making the home beautiful or the prayer element of it. Whatever that looks like for you, I hope that you can actually take this time to reflect and think about how you can grow, not just for the people that are in your home, but also for the people that your home is directly impacting as well. Well, I hope that you guys liked this video today. I know it was a little bit different than some of the content that I put out on my channel but I did mention that I wanted to get more into these topics of things that impact our world as women, the things that we're thinking through, how we can get better at all of those different types of things. And so if you did like it, then make sure that you give it a thumbs up today, but also subscribe to my channel if you don't wanna miss out on more content like this. And I'm so excited to hear about how you guys do with this challenge. I'm really looking forward to seeing even just some of the words that you guys think through. So if you want to share them and you're bold enough to do that, then feel free to comment with them down below but I would also love for you guys to comment with any other video topics or ideas of things that you want me to go into in the comment section. It is helpful for me as I think through some of the stuff that I'll be putting out and planning for for next year. So be sure to do that. But until my next video, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon.